greet our friends everywhere with chapter 14 of The Monk of Wittenberg, the story of Martin Luther. This is another in the series, Stories of Great Christians, and is brought to you by the Moody Bible Institute of Chicago. Frederick, then you gave me permission to accompany you to Worms. I thought seeing the deity in session would be wonderful. To be present at the first council that our new emperor has called. To see the state business of Germany conducted. To see the splendor of the royal court. I try to tell you the assembly would be in an uproar. You should have stayed at home. How could I have known that the powers of Rome and Germany were converging to bid for the blood of Martin Luther? Ursula, you are undisciplined. I eat your food. I cannot understand you. You don't seem concerned that Aleander stirred up so much pious hatred for Martin in the assembly this morning that every man there, including the emperor, is determined to erase the very memory of Martin Luther from German history. If Martin had been here, he could have defended himself, but you kept him from coming. And you eat your dinner. I am not going to argue with you. You are a woman, and my sister. But do not forget, ignorance breeds anger. Then help my ignorance. Listen, Ursula. I did not want Martin to come to the Diet because I feared that he would be seized and taken to Rome. The emperor has not yet taken a definite position in relation to Rome, and there was the possibility that Rome would dazzle him into giving up Martin. But Emperor Charles is greatly influenced by you. He knows that you favor Martin, and that you would be angry if he sided with the Pope about Luther. Oh, that is true. But my power has only been able to checkmate this king. But you will not win the game. It is not really my game, you know. The chief pawn must speak for himself. Justice, wake up. Justice, justice. Peter, what is it? Shh. Dr. Luther is still sleeping. What is the matter? Nothing. You told me to wake you up at dawn if I woke up. Oh, is it light already? Shh. Uh, all right, all right, little mother. I won't wake up your beloved teacher. He has been ill all the way from Wittenberg. I thought we would never get to Worms. Uh, it is a good thing I came on ahead to get this room. The city is so crowded. Yeah. Justice. A strange thing happened as Dr. Luther and I entered Worms. Huh? What was it? As we passed through the gates of Worms, a very great crowd thronged around us. And all of a sudden, a man dressed like a mourner in a funeral procession and carrying the traditional mourner's cross made his way through the crowd straight to Dr. Luther. Hmm. And then, with a loud voice and in that terrible chant in which Mass is said for the dead, he sang... At last thou art come to us, long looked for one, whom we have waited for in the darkness of the grave. It made me shudder. Uh, that is awful. <laughs> then what happened? Well, the people close up were stunned for a minute, and then they began to push him around, cheer at him, and soon he just melted into the crowd. Oh, how weird. I suppose it was planned to be a scare. Hey, what did Dr. Luther do? Nothing. Stared back at him. I think he was quite nervous about appearing before the dead. He was so preoccupied, he thinks about it a great deal. Oh, I hope the crowds are small this morning. He has been to enough strain already. Well, we'll find out soon enough. <laughs> Dr. Luther? Yeah? I am to escort you to the Diet. Uh, we are going to have a fight to get to the palace. I am used to fights. Make way! Make 
Big V! Devil! God bless you, Dr. Luther. Magistrate, let us go into a house. I, I cannot, cannot move. The crowd is so... Yeah, yeah. We could try going to the house and courtyard. Yeah. Martin Luther, His Sacred and Invincible Imperial Majesty has cited you before his throne in accordance with the advice and counsel of the states of the Holy Roman Empire to require you to answer two questions. First, do you acknowledge these books to have been written by you? Second, are you prepared to retract these books and their contents, or do you persist in the opinions you have advanced in them? Let the titles of the books be read. The freedom of a Christian man addresses to the nobility of the German nation. And finally, the Babylonian captivity of the church. Most gracious emperor, gracious princes and lords, his imperial majesty has asked me two questions. As to the first, I acknowledge as mine the books that have just been named. I cannot deny them. As to the second, whether or no I will retract, seeing that it is a question of which concerns faith and salvation and the word of God, I should act imprudently if I were to act without reflection. I might affirm less than the circumstance demands or more than the truth requires. And so sin against this saying of Christ Whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father in heaven. For this reason, I entreat your imperial majesty with all humility to allow me time uh, that I may answer without offending the word of God. I do not know that is not true. I don't believe I can. Your majesty, what think you of the monk? Certainly this man will never make a heretic of me. Give him permission. Martin Luther, his imperial majesty of his natural goodness, is very willing to grant you another day, but on the condition that you make your reply in person and not in writing. You may go. Almighty and everlasting God, how terrible is this world. Behold, it openeth its mouth to swallow me up, and I have so little trust in thee. How weak is the flesh. How powerful Satan. My last hour has come. My condemnation has been pronounced. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God, help me against all the wisdom of this world. I have nothing to do here. Nothing to contend for with these great ones of the world. I, I should desire to see my days flow on peaceful and happy, but, but the cause is thine. God... My God, hearest thou me not? God, art thou dead? No. No, thou hidest thyself only. Thou hast chosen me for this. Act then, O oh God. I am ready to lie down my life. My soul belongs to thee. O oh God, help me. Amen. Martin Luther, your delay has expired. Now, therefore, reply to the question, are you willing to retract what you have written? Most serene emperor, illustrious princes, gracious lords, I have written books against the papacy in which I have attacked those who, by their false doctrine, their evil lives, or their scandalous example, 
afflict the Christian world with tyranny. I cannot disavow these writings, for by so doing, I should sanction the godlessness of my adversaries. Yet I am a man and not God. I shall therefore defend myself as Christ did. If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. I beg you, by the mercies of God, to prove from the writings of the prophets and apostles that I have erred. As soon as I am convinced of this, I will retract. Otherwise, I cannot, I will not retract. Here I stand. I can do no other. May God help me. Amen. Dr. Luther, I don't understand. All of the meetings you went to in Rome, all of the controversy and waiting for the emperor to reach a decision. You didn't retract, and here you are safely on the way to Wittenberg. Uh, here is the whole history of the dead, Peter. Are these your books? Yeah. Will you retract them? No. Well, then be gone. Oh, blind Germans, how childishly they act to allow us to be the dupes and sports of Rome. But the emperor condemned you. Even though I let you go. Yeah. No man must give me a crust of bread or a cup of water or a night's lodging. All men are to burn my books. Anyone who seizes me and brings me before the emperor will be rewarded. What will you do? Where will you go? God knows. I'll be glad when we get out of this forest. It's so dark for it being only noon. The others have fallen behind us. You are not afraid of shadows, Peter. No. Peter. Yeah? I think I hear some horsemen. What? <laughs> I, I am only jesting. Peter, Peter, you must be brave. Oh, you scared me, sir. Dr. Luther. I think I hear some horsemen. <laughs> you don't think to catch me in my own trap, eh? Peter, I must teach you to have sharper wits. No, no, I hear them. I do hear them, Dr. Luther. Look, there they are. Stop! Stop the carriage! Help! Help! Halt! Halt! Then we won't hurt you! So we conclude chapter 14 of The Monk of Wittenberg, the story of Martin Luther. This is another in the series, Stories of Great Christians, and come to you transcribed from the Moody Bible Institute in Chicago. Chicago.